Session 1, Part 2, Direct and Indirect Cold Water Systems. So at the end of this part of the session, I want you all to be able to recognise the key information sources for hot and cold water systems. Identify the key differences between direct and indirect cold water systems and identify which system type would be preferable depending on the circumstance. So firstly, regulations and standards. Whenever we install any plumbing systems, they must be meet the legal requirements. The legal requirements are set out in the Water Supply and Fittings Regulation. And this booklet here is the guide to the water regulations, which isn't actually more well, this booklet, but it is fantastic in terms of the information that, that it gives us. It explains the regulations very, very well. We can also um, use uh, <coughs> British Standards uh, BSE and 806 and the supplementary guidance BS8558, which give us a lot of information on hot and cold water systems. We can find more, and this would be more general advice uh, around sort of systems and, and the requirements of systems, systems, systems. Um, if we want to find specific information on how to install an individual appliance, you'd find that information in the installation instructions. So direct and indirect cold water systems. Um, cold water systems can be described as being either direct, indirect, or combined. It is really, really simple. Um, in a direct cold water systems system, all of the cold water appliances are fed directly from the main. And as we talked about in the last uh, section, that pipe would be described as the supply pipe because it's coming straight from the mains. Okay. In an indirect cold water uh, system, all of the outlets, apart from the kitchen sink, would be fed indirectly from the main through a storage system. Okay, so we'd have our supply pipe coming up here, filling the system, and then the pipework from the system, if it's feeding uh, cold water outlets, uh, this would be described as a cold water distribution pipe. There's a lot of key differences between the direct and indirect cold water system, which we're going to cover over the rest of this section. Okay, briefly discuss what a combined system is. It probably won't come up in your test. A combined system would have some outlets coming from a system, coming from storage, and some from, from the main. Okay. It's a good time to introduce you to direct and indirect hot water because they are slightly different. Okay. In the case of direct and indirect hot water, it refers, the direct and indirect refers to how the water is heated. So for a direct hot water system, it's referring to whether or not the water is heated directly by the heat source. For example, like a combi boiler, the combi boiler is the heat source and the water is, is heated by the heat source and then it comes out of our taps. Or for example, if there was an immersion heater, an immersion heater is the heat source, it's going to be sitting in, in the cylinder. Um, the immersion heater heats up and directly heats the water, which then comes out of our taps. Or, or we might have an indirect hot, hot water system, uh, which would have what we describe as a secondary heat exchanger um, like you can see in the picture on the right, um, which shows a cylinder with a coil. If you look on the left hand side, you can see an example of a indirect hot water system. You've got the boiler there, um, which goes to the cylinder. The cylinder has the coil in it, so that what's heated in the boiler, the heated water circulates through the coil and then returns to the boiler. And the coil, the heated water in the coil, heats the water in the cylinder. So therefore, it's heated indirectly by the heat source. The water from the heat source never actually doesn't come out of our taps, essentially. 
So just very briefly introducing you to direct and indirect hot water because it is something that is also relevant, uh, particularly in our next module, and, and we don't want to get confused between direct and indirect cold and direct and indirect hot. OK. So now we're going to look for the rest of the session, look specifically at direct and indirect cold water. So we've got an example here of a direct cold water system. system. You notice here we've got a service pipe here, sometimes known as the supply pipe coming in from the mains, 25 mil MDP, like we discussed in the, in the last section, comes up through the internal stop valve and you would always have a drain off there. Um, and this would then sort of rise and f feed all of the cold appliances. You can see here that we have got a storage system in the loft, and this this is this can be confusing, can make things a little bit tricky. Um, but you can see that this system is only feeding the hot water cylinder, okay, to what was described as the cold feed, okay. So this service pipe, as it comes in, something known as a supply pipe would be at least 25 mil. When, once it gets into the property, it can be reduced to as little as 15 mil if it's only feeding a few appliances. Uh, so a supply pipe can be a minimum of 15 mil. And the reason for this is because it's got high pressure, the water can push through it quite quickly and, and get to all of our appliances still, with, with still giving us a good flow rate. Um, for a gravity, also known as an open vented hot water system, um, you'd have a, a system in the in the loft with a minimum capacity of, of at least 100 litres. And from that, um, you'd have a cold feed pipe, which would feed the, the hot water cylinder with what is initially cold water, which would then obviously be heated in the cylinder. The, the cold feed should be a minimum of 22 mil. The open vent pipe should be a minimum internal diameter of 19 mil, which we normally use 22 mil for. Okay, and then the hot distribution is the main runs are almost certainly going to be 22 mil, but the minimum size worth noting is the same as the supply pipe as a minimum of 15 mil, but the main runs are almost certainly going to be 22 mil. Okay. So an indirect cold water system. Um, the pipework in this system is fed mainly from the system. And as we mentioned earlier, this would be the pipework from the system would be known as the cold water distribution pipework. So the pipe going up to the, the, the system to fill it um, would be known as the supply pipe because it's coming from the mains. The pipe which comes out from the system uh, at lower pressure to feed the, the outlets would be known as the cold water distribution pipe, okay? Being fed from storage, which means that the pressure is going to be relatively low compared to the, the pressure coming in from the mains. As a result of this, we want to make sure that we make the pipe size a little bit uh, bigger. So as of just like I said for a hot dis distribution on the on the previous slide, we want to make sure that our main runs are at least 22 mil to ensure we get a good flow rate. Um, and then as we go off to appliances, individual appliances, we can reduce it to the minimum size, which is 15 mil for our cold distribution pipe. There's there's always a risk of con contamination in any system. And as a result of that, we need to make sure that you always feed the kitchen sink from the mains, no matter whether it's a direct system or an indirect cold water system, the kitchen sink is always going to be fed from the mains, okay? If an indirect system feeds both the hot and the cold, it should have a minimum capacity of at least 2 100 litres, on, in the case of sometimes I'll show it as 230 litres in the test. Okay. So pros and cons of the direct system. Well, pros, there's no requirement for a system in the loft, so it saves money and space in terms of from an installation point of view. 
Um, the water pressure at all the outlets will be high. All appliances are fed from the supply pipes to the drinking water at all the outlets. Um, because the pressure is higher, it, you can use smaller pipe work. So again, cheaper installation costs. The cons, um, the system will not have a store of cold water should the main fail. Higher pressure means more wear and tear on taps and valves, more likely to wear out and have to be replaced. And the mains can be affected by fluctuations in pressure in the mains. So if you've got, if, if you're in an area of, of low mains pressure, then perhaps an indirect system might be a better option. Okay. Pros and cons of an indirect system, they're basically just flipped on their head. The cons for the direct system are the pros for the indirect system and vice versa. So our, our pros are an indirect system would have a store of cold water should the main fail. The water pressure at most outlets would be low, so there's less wear and tear on mud taps and valves. The system will not be affected by fluctuations in pressure in the mains, so it would be ideal to use in areas of low water pressure. The cons are the water pressure at all outlets apart from the kitchen sink will be low. And um, because of the risk of contamination, we should only really drink water from the kitchen tap. Uh, higher installation costs uh, initially due to larger pipe sizes and also the requirement for a system and also the, the space requirement for the system in the attic as well. So which system is best? Well, it very much depends on what the customer wants. So you should take into consideration the water pressure from the mains. If the water pressure is low, then you might recommend an indirect system. Um, but it's obviously up to the customer. Okay. In terms of installing the system, well, whichever system is is installed, it must be in line, done in line with the water regulations, uh, and also make sure that you follow all of the requirements of the building regulations that we discussed in the last module. Things are like notching and protecting the property, clip distances for the pipework, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and so if you need to refer back to the processes module for this requirement, if you need to, there's going to be a few questions on this in the cold water test. Okay, so now it is time for your task. <laughs>